Hi friends, welcome to my channel and the second video in my unboxing from Oneness Emporium. And again, I have to apologise about the light because here we are, October, and the sun is going in and out and there's some pretty heavy storm clouds coming. But I'm going to do this video anyway because I really want to see the deck. <laughs> okay, and I thought I will share it with you as I normally share my new decks. I like to, uh, I like to share. Anyway, so this is the Queen Mab Oracle from Tess Whitehurst, and this is Divine Feminine Wisdom from the Queen of the Fae. I'm brushing that because it's raised. That typeface is raised there and there. Oh, beautiful production value. What do we have on the side? Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so it's a Blue Angel deck. So same that side, same that side. And on the back we've got some shiny images from the deck at the top and the bottom. And it's 45 cards and a 160 page full colour guidebook from all such stuff that dreams are made of. Your answers are on the way to you. On the wings of an endless midsummer's night, something blessed this way comes, powered by the earth, the wind and the divine radiance of the fairy queen. Ancient and powerful Queen Mab is an elemental emissary of charm, moonlight and manifestation. Turn to her for meaning, revelation and insight into the poetry and empowerment of play within all that is and all you shall become. And then there's a quote. Queen Mab, I hear and embody your wisdom so that I may own my divinity and affirm magic in the world. So yeah, a fey deck. So it's a lift off box with a thumbnail in the side. Look at, oh, look at that it's gorgeous autumn orange there. Beautiful. So we have here the guidebook, nice and chunky. Oh, a glossy back. How cool is that? Nice large writing, thank you. <laughs> so it's in a paper band at the bottom of the box. So let's have a look at the guidebook first. So I'll be good and start from the front. <laughs> right, so this, yeah, I had on pre order. It's taken a little while actually to get to this country, I think. Oh, artwork by Melanie Dellen and Cecilia G.F. Artworks for cards 157, 26 and 35 are copyrighted to Cecilia G.F. And all the other artworks are copyright, copyright to Melan Melanie Dellen. So two different artists. We've got that same image of the box on the front here. Contents. Enter the realm of the Fairy Queen. We have. A note from the author, how to prepare your deck for use, how to do a reading with the deck, and then the cards, and then about the author and about the artists. Here we go, into the realm of the Fairy Queen. It's like going into a storybook, and this is very Art Deco. No, it's actually Art Nouveau, isn't it? Those beautiful swirly lines. Okay, a note from the author. I've got a picture there. The wisdom in each card des description comes directly from Queen Mab, the Fairy Queen. Of course, I, Tess, wrote it down. Okay. So the card titles are almost exclusively phrases that appear somewhere in Shakespeare's works. The messages contain phrases in language that I ultimately chose and that sounded right to me. Queen Mab features in A Midsummer's Night's Dream and is referred to as Titania. Okay. So there's a little bit of background there. How to prepare the deck, sunrise method, full moon method, or oh, the sun's coming back out. 
uh, how to do the readings. We've got a three card reading, a one card reading, and that's that's it. Okay. But then with oracle decks, it's not quite the same as it as tarot decks, you know. Usually we get the answer we need with one card. So, yeah, straight into the card. So we've got half, one and a half, sort of two-ish pages. We've got a little image of the card itself on each. Yeah, around two pages, I would say, per card. about the author so they've produced three other oracle decks the oracle of portals portals cosmic dancer oracle and the magic of flowers oracle and she also has another one in the works <laughs> okay lives in colorado and there's the website and then okay so melanie delong is from France, Normandy no less, and she's had art books published. And then Cecilia, mm, Cecilia GF has a degree in art history from the University of Malaga. Okay, so we've got quite an eclectic mix of people that have come together to produce the contents of this deck. And we've got, there's the Oracle of Portals, Cosmic Dancer Oracle, that Practical Magic is fantastic. Somebody um, left a comment actually on, yeah, on that video about, the, you know, whether to get the Solitary Witch or the Practical Magic. And I have answered that. And I would say if you like a lot of content and you like something really meaty, you know, to get your teeth into, something to really study and... Um, give you lots of information practical magic there is the way to go solitary witch it's it's nice i like it but actually i don't even know if i'm going to keep it uh if i'm going to be perfectly honest it's nice it's lovely and i don't know um i don't find there's as much depth to it as there is with the practical magic if i had to only keep one then it would be that practical magic it is probably a year-long deck you know a bit like the Canterbury Oracle something you can use all year round well I mean you can use any deck all year round that's probably the wrong way of saying it but yeah I think you can get some deep working with this practical magic deck anyway I've really gone off topic here <laughs> so notes um, and I really like Blue Angel decks I know that some people don't but uh, I do so there's no edge into this deck. Let's pull them out so we don't damage them. I've learnt over time how to do that and not to just rip the band off and risk damaging the cards. Okay, so they're a nice large size, a typical Blue Angel size actually. So if we compare it to a tarot card, yeah, you can see the difference. Let's zoom in a bit. Yeah, quite a bit of difference. So I will do a walkthrough. Gosh, it's quite dark, isn't it? Hopefully I can lighten it up with the, <laughs> with the camera. But yeah, do a walkthrough of the deck. These are the backs. Oh, this is beautiful. These backs, such an Art Nouveau feel to those. And sacred geometry almost. They've got like, it's like a, a golden purple. Oh, lush. I love this. Whoa. Herein lies wisdom. Isn't that great for a first card in an oracle deck? You know, there's a promise. Herein lies wisdom. Hmm. Okay, so let's have a look at the card, shall we? So we've got the Sword of Truth here as well. Like a sickle moon on a necklace, and that motif from the back of the cards is on the front as well. What do we have here? Oh, 
that is gorgeous. Protector of the realm. Stunning. Renew thy force. I'm using old language here. Many rings <laughs> and some sort of a beetle. Lace on the dress. Almost like a rainbow over the face. And the hands are actually in a prayer position. Okay. The sacred radiance. Look at these horses here. Wow, in the background. I think they're horses. Could be mythical creatures, possibly. Listen to the moon. She has some butterfly energy. Killed with a living death. Wow. We've got the skull on the top there. Chains. Mm. Interesting story. Wild watery sea. So the mermaid energy. I think Lucy Cavendish's next deck is something to do with mermaids. The wrath of love. Oh. We have our crown. There the arrow look. Oh. And here and here. That, that reminds me of that. Is it Duran Duran song? Is it Poison Arrow? Something that Poison Arrow from my soul. I don't know. I can't remember. But <laughs> yeah. That's what it reminded me when I looked at it. Look at the darkness here. The spider's webs. What's this one? Darkness as a bride. Ooh. Another crown. Weaving the web. Make not your thoughts your prisons. Oh, don't we do that? His hands are holding some sort of a light. Again, we're chained. Chained by our own thoughts. The rose of youth. <laughs> Might want to bloom, hey? <laughs> In youth. Wasn't they say that youth is wasted on the young? <laughs> Strange invisible perfume. That's different. A most prosperous perfection. Some very rich autumnal colours in this one. A winged messenger. Beautiful. Love. Lend me wings. That's a saying. Love, lend me wings. Hmm. This uh, arm here seems to be protecting maybe the heart chakra. Just a thought. Queen of Queens. Whoa. Green is stunning. Green and gold. Such rich colours, aren't they? Oh. The I will love. And that looks to me like a Venus fly trap. Oh, okay. That's not what it 
seems, is it? Ooh, strong. Proud and pitiless. Oh. So this is the image from the front of the box. Proud and pitiless. I think this uh, message is going to be quite strong. <laughs> there is my pledge. wonder who this person is looking out to. We have a consternation in the hair. Or is it hairness? Oh, well, you know, one of those Tudor type hairnets? It looks a bit like a consternation. <laughs> Thou art a witch. <laughs> I'm proud of it. <laughs> You've got some sort of snake energy around her leg there. Some sort of octopus. Lots of things to look at in these uh, in these cards. Heart is bleeding. It's a bit like that circus oracle, isn't it? That's what that reminds me of. The spirit riseth. Oh, 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 oh. wow. There's control, hopefully. Beauteous freedom. The fabrics and the colours, you know, they're absolutely amazing in this deck. I know there's two different um, artists. I think you can sort of tell the difference. Spangled starlight sheen. Again, look at the fabric. Roses. The way these figures are lit up. Brilliant. Yeah, you can tell this is the other artist, can't you? I can see which are one art style. That's definitely one art style, isn't it? And then it's another. As destiny decrees. We've got a crown here and we've got a proclamation, maybe? Or a letter? But yeah, this person doesn't have a choice, I don't think. Flower of Warriors. Mm. These violent delights. Shipwrecks. So this mermaid on the rocks. And then the ships on the rocks have floundered. Hmm. A queen in bondage. So we've got some more chains. There's a few of these cards that have got chains on. It's nice crystals for a headdress there. A vision full of majesty. Falcon's flight. Roses have thorns. <laughs> Something rich and strange. Yeah, we're raising energy here. Wind in the hair there. A dream of love. Everlasting farewell. This is the only card I've seen so far with a person of colour. I have yet to see a person of age. But carry on to see if one comes along. Extremity of rage. Okay, so shattered here. <laughs> rage, that energy from the from the mind. Welcome, Dread Fury. Mm. The Sea Maid's Music. Thundery Sky. Her Pale Fire. There's the 
はい。Love all, trust few. <laughs> Wisdom born of time, I would say. The forgeries of jealousy. So wearing a mask. Venus in the sky. Had some hair there. <laughs> Raging fire of fever. And follow darkness like a dream. Drive into the fire. Phoenix. Eh? Okay, it's a beautiful deck. I've only seen a couple of images with person of colour and I've only I can only remember seeing one of age. You know, someone a little bit older. And that's the top card. And it says herein lies wisdom and so it's aligning wisdom with age there. The rest are all pretty females, which I know is a problem now for a lot of people. They'd like to see a lot more diversity in decks, just to represent, you know, real life. But then, this is the Fae realm. Who's to say what Fae looks like? I mean, I love Brian Froud type of Fae. That, for me, that, I love that sort of Fae. But this is a beautiful um, artistic deck. Absolutely gorgeous. However, you, I'm myself would not be able to read with this without the keywords or the book and I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's the only way I'm going to be able to read this deck so let's take a look at a card I'm going to look at one of the more troublesome seeming messages here shall we have a look at these violent delights <laughs> and see what the flavour of the book is okay so this is card 28 Oh, straight on it. <laughs> Weird when that happens. Anyway, see through the drama and games. You have been drawn into a drama. <laughs> Something seductive, exciting and dark. Perhaps you haven't realised there is a form of beauty in this because you have only been focused on the drama's requisite heartbreak or discord. But the beauty is there. Sometimes we actually crave drama in order to inject a little excitement into life. This is not a judgment. In fact, life would be half-lived if it didn't contain at least a little such delectable enchantment and pain. But the message here is the conditions are unstable. As they are, they certainly cannot hold. Someone may be drawing someone else into a lovely trap. Are you the trapper or the trapped? Most likely a little of both, but take heed. If things continue as they are, a glorious shipwreck could be ahead. One day you might reminisce, smile and say, it happened, it was terrible, or it was also lovely in its way, and then it was over. Or perhaps you'd prefer to prolong or preserve something here by establishing more sustainable conditions. If the latter is the case, you have work to do to transform this situation or relationship into one that will happily and joyfully last. Even still, you may not succeed. In fact, it may be better for you to look elsewhere for stability, to take what you will from this experience and move on to the next. Provided engaging in this drama is not truly dangerous to your body, mind and spirit, feel free to stay with it for as long as it thrills and entices you. It will probably not last much longer anyway, so you might as well live it up. <laughs> But if engaging in this drama does put you in some form of danger, or if you've just grown weary of being in such an unsustainably elevated milieu, get out. Another reason to put a stop to this situation will be if you are mistreating someone or cruelly playing with their emotions. If you are not acting with integrity, other areas of your life will surely suffer. You will do well to change your approach so that you act with greater honour and impeccability. Even if that requires you to apologise or admit you have been dishonest or behaved untowardly. As the great bard wrote, 
this is Shakespeare, isn't it? The Bard. Um, though these violent delights have violent ends. If you aren't ready for an ending, you might find a steadier pace and navigate toward calmer waters. So there we are, all at sea. So that has been the Queen Mab Oracle. Very nice deck. And some of the imagery is not for me. This sort of imagery is not for me. But uh, yeah, I like most of it. So I shall work with it for a while, read the guidebook, draw cards, do some journaling and see how I connect with the Queen Mab Oracle from Tess Whitehurst. And for now, thank you so much for watching, friends. Until the next time, bye for now. Bye.